for your kindness every day, your first thoughts for your family, love and compassion as your way. God bless you, Mom, for all the things you do, the meals, the hugs and kisses, teaching us to tie our shoes. God bless the mom with a career outside the home. You're like a superhero wherever that you roam. God bless the mom who chooses to stay at home. The countless things you do each day remind me I'm not alone. God bless you, Mom, for the ways you put family for soccer games and car rides. All, all our things you carry in your purse. God bless you, Mom, for faithfully bringing us to church. You live in a way that shows a life for God is a life of worth. God bless you, Mom, for the songs you sing us at night. Whenever you sing and when you worship, you show us what is right. God bless you, Mom, for all the time you spend in prayer. You sow so many seeds of faith that are blooming everywhere. God bless you, Mom, for the ways you live out your faith. We are all first-hand witnesses of the difference that you make. God bless you, Mom. Words can express our love. For all your amazing qualities, we thank our God above. A mother is a gift from God, each one designed in a special way. From the bottom of our hearts, we wish you a very happy Mother's Day. 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 Hey, good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church of Burnett. We are so excited to have you with us online this Sunday morning at First Baptist Church. As you can see, we are in the worship center and the reason we're here is because we are taking the next few weeks to really diligently get ready to resume in-person worship gatherings starting Sunday, May 24th. On that Sunday, we will have both our first service, which is our hymn-led service, and our second service, which is our modern service. The first service is going to be at 9.30, second service at 11 o'clock, and you are more than welcome to come and join us in person for both of those services. We'll also have Sunday morning classes that day at various spots here in the church, so make sure you come out and connect through one of our classes, because that's a great way for you to get to know other people here at the church. There is a lot going on right now. The world is still trying to adjust to what things look like during this crisis. And so as we move forward, we want to encourage you to continue to pray for us here at the church, for the people here in our community, and for all of those around the world who are being affected. And know that we are going to be doing our best to pray for you and be diligent to provide a safe place for us to come together and worship every single Sunday moving forward. Again, we are so thankful that you've joined us this Sunday morning at First Baptist Church of Burnett.
Well, good morning, church family. For those of you who are moms, I just want to say happy Mother's Day, and I hope your day is blessed. I hope you just have a really special time with your family, with the Lord, and uh, just so grateful that you joined us this morning for our online worship service. I also want you to know that I'm looking forward to seeing you in Sunday school on the 17th and also seeing you for our first uh, uh, prayer meeting together again on the 20th and then uh, our first worship service uh, together again on the 24th. And I'm really looking forward to that. Just encourage you to be sensitive, to know exactly what it is that we uh, want to do together and what our expectations are of one another uh, so that we can just have a great time of worship together. So hopefully you've gotten your Bible and uh, we're continuing our study of Romans chapter 14, uh, talking about staying on the path to peace. And uh, we've looked at the fact that we have to accept one another. That's the first thing we need to do. We began last week looking at the fact that we need to get to have a a regular heart checkup. But talking about accepting one another, we need to understand that uh, we're all different. And then that's okay. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And, and we have different opinions on debatable issues. And there are debatable issues. We also need to remind ourselves that if a person has trusted Jesus, then he's accepted him. And if he's accepted him, then we should too. And then, uh, and then the fourth, of course, uh, the other thing that we talked about regarding accepting one another is, is uh, the fact that, that Jesus, if a person is a follower of Jesus, he can take care of them, okay? He can make them stand. And so that helps us in the process of accepting one another, and accepting one another helps us stay on that path to peace. And so last week, we began uh, looking at the fact that we're going to need to have a heart checkup. If we're going to stay on the path to peace, we got to check our heart. Now, we're not talking about our physical heart, obviously, although that's important. Uh, We're talking about our emotions. We're talking about our will. We're talking about our motives. We need to constantly be examining those things, our emotions in check. Is our will uh, obstinate and, 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 uh, and, and insistent on doing what we want regardless of how it impacts others? Um, are we are our motives pure? Are we doing things for the right reason? And so if we're going to give ourselves a regular heart checkup, there are four questions that we need to, to ask ourselves. We looked at the first one last week. Uh, are we convinced? Am I sure uh, that this is okay with Jesus? This debatable issue, this thing that I'm doing that others are not comfortable doing, not clearly forbidden in Scripture, Holy Spirit doesn't seem to be convicting me regarding this. Am I fully convinced that this thing is okay with Jesus? Because if we're not convinced that it's okay with Jesus, what we're doing, then we're not going to have peace. We're going to have this sense of conviction, this sense of of shame or guilt. And so it's important. And that's the first question we've got to ask ourselves, you know, this debatable issue, of course, is it is it clearly, uh, not clearly forbidden in Scripture, or clearly taught in Scripture? Uh, is the Holy Spirit convicting me? Am I fully convinced? I want to look at the other three questions this morning. And this is based on Romans chapter 14, verse 5 through 9. So let me read uh, these verses, and then we'll look at these other three questions that we need to ask ourselves as we engage in this regular heart checkup. All right, so beginning in verse 5, it says, One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. And so there is the first question that we ask ourselves. Verse 6, However, uh, whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For no one, uh, for none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned so that Uh, He might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. And so in these uh, verses, I think we can discover three other questions that I think are going to be very helpful for us in doing this regular heart checkup, checking our motives, our emotions, our will, and uh, and whether those things are pleasing to the Lord and whether those things are bringing us a sense of peace and a lack of conflict uh, externally. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about walking down this path to peace, both inner peace and external peace, where we're not in constant 
conflict with those uh, around us. So let me look at the other three questions. First one, of course, is, am I convinced that this is okay with Jesus? Second question is, are we doing this for Jesus? Are we doing this for Jesus? Now, a couple of things, a couple of times he says, uh, one person considers one day, I'm, I'm sorry, verse six says, uh, whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Okay, does so to the Lord. They're doing it for the Lord. And, and that's the second question. Are we doing this for Jesus or not? Now, most of us are aware of how we feel about something we're doing. We're okay with it. If somebody else has a problem with it, then that's their problem. We're, we're okay with it. But most of the time, we're aware of how other people feel about something we're doing or not doing, like, like our spouse. Um, they've made it clear they disagree with whatever it is we're doing and they wish we wouldn't do it uh, or they need us to do something that we're not doing and and they've made that clear and we're aware of how they feel about it so we know how we feel about it we know how they feel about it but how often do we think about how Jesus feels about something how often do you ask Jesus Jesus, how do you feel about what I'm doing? Am I, am I really doing this for you or am I doing this for me? Um, and that's an important question because if we don't know how Jesus feels or we're not uh, asking him consistently how he feels, then, then we're not going to have that inner sense of peace. And so we need to be aware of how Jesus feels about it. When all the factors were weighed in this particular passage, uh, it was okay with Jesus uh, for some to eat meat. And, and it was okay with Jesus for some not to eat meat, as long as the one who was eating meat was doing it for Jesus. And the one who wasn't doing it, uh, wasn't eating meat, was also doing that for Jesus. It was okay with Jesus when all the factors were weighed. Uh, if a person considered one day as particularly sacred and honored him on that day, or if someone considered every day equally uh, sacred. Both of those positions were okay with Jesus uh, when all the factors were weighed. And so the question is, what are the what are the factors we're talking about? Well, is it biblical? Uh, is it causing conviction? If it's causing conviction, then it's not okay with Jesus for you to do something that's causing you uh, conviction. Is it causing someone else to stumble? If it is, then it's not okay with Jesus for you to do that particular thing that's causing someone else to stumble. Is it impacting our health in a negative way? If it is, then it's not okay uh, with Jesus because he's intensely interested in our health. Uh, is it creating tension in a relationship? Well, if it's creating tension in a relationship, then that's not okay with Jesus. Um, whether we're uh, doing it for Jesus or not, uh, that's important. That's an important factor. And so this, we have to, everything that's in our lives, especially those things that seem to be stealing our inner peace or those things that are causing conflict in others. It's, it's so important that we examine our heart and say, am I doing this for Jesus um, or am I doing this for me? And if I'm doing it for Jesus, then everything's going to be okay. If I'm not doing it for Jesus, then there's no guarantee that everything is going to be okay. And so one thing may be okay for somebody, but not for somebody else. I had a, a college professor who I loved and respected dearly. And uh, one of the things that he said uh, on a couple of occasions that really stuck with me, we're talking about 35 years ago when I was in college, and I still remember it to this day. Uh, it was a simple statement, and it's kind of a statement that I've used throughout my life. And what he would say is, some may, but I may not. And what that means is there's some things that other people uh, can do, but, but I can't do those things for whatever reason, because it causes tension, because it creates conviction, whatever it might be. Um, and when that is, is applied to debatable issues, then that, that statement is actually absolutely true, where Jesus would say to one person, yeah, you can eat meat, that's okay. Um, and then he would say to another, no, I'd really rather you not eat meat um, because the risk of it being um, sacrificed to an idol. To, to one, he would say, you know what? You can really hold one day as sacred and special and celebrate that day and, and uh, refocus and rest and all those things. But, uh, but it would also be okay with, with him for somebody to honor every single day as sacred and just have that, that one day where they worship and gather with other believers. Those things are okay with him. Uh, some may, but, but others may not. 
And so the whole way to discern that is for you personally and me personally to examine our heart, check our heart and say, you know, am I doing this for Jesus? Really doing this for, for Jesus? Uh, he says they, they do so for the Lord. And so it's okay uh, with him. Uh, years ago, I was asking Jesus how he felt about a particular thing in my life. And and uh, it was funny because he brought this uh, thought to mind. He, he just added the, this question came to mind. He said, what do you think, Doug? How, how do you think I feel about this? And I said, well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. He said, what do you think the expression on my face is? And these are the thoughts that are coming to my mind in my interaction with Jesus. And I paused and I pictured the, the face of Jesus. Now, I didn't picture the color of his hair and, and the complexion of his skin. I, I didn't let him look at that. I just looked at, in my, in my mind's eye, I tried to discern the expression on Jesus' face. And I was amazed when I did that how easy it was. How easy it was to determine, to discern whether Jesus was smiling, whether Jesus was frowning, or whether Jesus was just neutral about something that I was doing. And that has been an indispensable tool in my life, is whenever I'm doing something, I try to imagine what Jesus is thinking about that. And the way I do that is, what's the expression on his face? Is he smiling? And it's so obvious when he's smiling. Is he frowning? And unfortunately, it's pretty obvious when he's frowning. Um, or is he neutral? Is he okay one way or the other? It, it just doesn't, it's, it's not really a, a major issue to him what I'm doing or not doing. And I want to encourage you to adopt that discipline. It's absolutely amazing. I think you'll be shocked when you start thinking, okay, what is Jesus doing right now? Is he smiling, frowning, or is he neutral? I think you'll be amazed how easy it is to discern uh, that. And and so the, the whole point is if he's frowning, then obviously I can't do this thing for him. If there's something I'm doing, and I say, well, I'm doing this for Jesus, but he's frowning, then I know that that's not the case. And there again, we're going to lose peace. It's going to re result in, in a loss of inner peace. It's going to result in, a, in, a, in conflict uh, around us. And so the goal is to be able to say, uh, Jesus, I'm doing this for you. Okay, I'm doing this for you, Jesus, to be helpful to, to either me or to someone else. And I am, I am very confident, Jesus, that this is making you smile. And that's the goal. And, and if we can say that and we can answer that question, am I doing this for Jesus in the affirmative? Then we're going to have peace. We're going to be on that path to peace. But if we can't have that confidence, then we're not going to have that inner sense of peace. And more than likely, the thing that we're doing is going to continue to result in conflict uh, in our lives. And so ask yourself this question, am I doing this for Jesus? Second question, are we grateful? Are we grateful for it? And this is, of course, in verse six, he goes on, uh, whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord, whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, uh, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so for the Lord, and they give thanks to God. And so twice he says, they give thanks. And so we need to be able to ask ourselves, am I grateful for this thing that I'm doing that is a debatable issue? Am I grateful, uh, for instance, those that were eating meat, uh, were they saying, Jesus, I am so grateful for this meat that you've provided for me and my family. For those who weren't eating meat, were they saying, Jesus, I'm so grateful that you have provided for our needs, you've provided other types of food, and you've given us strength to resist uh, eating meat that brings us conviction. Those who were celebrating one day as sacred versus those who were celebrating every day as sacred was the one who was celebrating one day where they saying, Jesus, thank you for this very special day where I rest and I refocus on you and reprioritize my life. The ones who celebrate every day or honored every day as sacred, were they saying, Jesus, thank you for another day to honor you and to refocus uh, on you? Um, and so the question is, gratitude. Are we grateful? Are we thanking the Lord in good conscience for the thing that we are uh, d debating uh, about? So the question is, are you telling Jesus thank you for everything in your life? I think that's one reason in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write, in everything give thanks. In 
everything, whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, whether you celebrate one day as sacred, whether you celebrate every day as sacred, whether you're doing something that other Christians may disagree with, but it's a debatable issue, not clearly forbidden in scripture. Uh, are you giving him thanks for that thing? Are you following the guidelines of Romans chapter 14 so that you don't cause someone else uh, to stumble or cause somebody else a problem? Are you giving thanks in everything um, in your life? And if, it, if, if, if he doesn't uh, want us to do something, you know, if there's something that Jesus doesn't want us to do, like we're eating meat and he doesn't want us to, or not eating meat, or, or, uh, or, or all those debatable issues that we might go into, um, if we know he doesn't want us to do it, then we can't in good conscience give him thanks. And that's a litmus test. If, if you can't say, thank you, Jesus, for this thing I'm enjoying, uh, then there's a problem. And it's going to steal your inner peace. It's probably going to result in conflict. And so uh, are you grateful? Are you thanking him for that thing that may be creating some tension um, in your lives? Gratitude is so important. You know, a grateful heart acknowledges that we are continuously being showered with things we don't deserve. And that feels so good to know that, man, he blessed me with that and I didn't deserve that. And he blessed me with this and, and I don't deserve that. And, and he hasn't allowed me to experience this bad thing. And, and I'm so great. It feels so good. On the other hand, an ungrateful heart, a heart that's not grateful, uh, says, you know, I've worked hard for everything I've got. And nobody has given me a thing. I deserve everything I have. And if that's your attitude, I just want you to understand that that's going to lead you to a very lonely place. That's going to lead you to a very painful and lonely place. I hope that's not the attitude of your heart. I hope that you know that every breath is a gift from God. Every beat of your heart is an expression of his love for you. The fact that you have a right mind and you can think clearly, that is a gift from God to you, an expression of his love. And when you understand that and you acknowledge that, oh, it makes all the difference in the world. It brings such a sense of peace and gratitude uh, to your heart. It feels so good. So the question again, are we uh, thanking Jesus for everything in our lives? That's the second, that's the, the third question. First one, are we fully convinced? Second one, are we doing this for Jesus? Third one, are we grateful for it? Fourth question, fourth and final question, how will this impact others? And we find that in verse uh, verse seven. He says uh, this simple statement, uh, for none of us live for ourselves alone. None of us dies for ourselves alone. Everything we do impacts other people. Everything. And so we need to, you know, to, to, to acknowledge that and ask, how's this going to impact others? So often we're tempted to only care about ourselves and how it impacts us. And, and we can do that, but it's going to, you're not going to be on the path to peace. If you have this self-centered the attitude where you're the only one that matters and what you think is the only right thing to think, um, then you're, you're forfeiting peace. You're going to diverge off of that peaceful path and, and you're just not going to have, uh, peace if you're the only one you care about because, because other people are impacted. Um, you can try to go off and, and live out in the wilderness by yourself and, and you'd be a very lonely person. Do you have peace there? But most of us are surrounded by people, whether it's at school or work or home or church. We're surrounded by other people and those people are impacted by the decisions we make, the things we do and the things we don't do. And we need to consider that. Our first concern, of course, needs to be Jesus. Uh, he says, uh, we live for the Lord, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we, we do for Jesus. And so he's the first one, obviously, that uh, we need to be concerned about. We need to ask, how does he feel about it? You know, he, he loves you, and it, and it grieves him when we make decisions that are going to forfeit our inner peace. It grieves him when we make decisions that result in, in conflict with those around us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 through 32 is all about conflict, all about conflict resolution. And, uh, and listen to what it says. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do you know that you can make the Holy Spirit sad? You can make Jesus sad. 
You can put a frown on his face. That's what I'm saying. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid. Here's how we don't grieve him. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And so that's taking other people's thoughts and feelings into consideration when you're making decisions about what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. That's part of a heart checkup. That's part of checking our motives. That's part of checking our, our will is asking ourselves, how will this impact other people? How will this impact Jesus? Will this grieve him? Will this make him sad? Our second concern obviously needs to be those around us. How is what we're doing affecting the people around us? Um, you know, it's Mother's Day. And obviously, um, we, we would wonder how would this impact uh, my mom. Now, obviously, some of our moms have, uh, some of your moms have gone to be with the Lord. I'm blessed and still have my mom here uh, with me. And and some of us, unfortunately, didn't have a, a very good mom uh, growing up. And and um, and we might be tempted to say, I don't care how my mom feels about it. But uh, but we need to honor our parents. We need to honor our mother and father. We're commanded by God. It's part of the of the the process of walking on that path to peace, whether they deserve it or not. But Oftentimes, a good question is, what would my mom think about this thing I'm doing? How would my mom feel about this thing I'm not doing? Because our moms, most of them, they love us and they they really want the best. I want to encourage you who are mothers, be the best mother you can be. That is your most important job, other than being a daughter of the living God. Okay, being a mother, being a wife, those are the most important jobs that you have. Do them to the best of your ability. Your children are depending on you so that when they, as they grow up, they can say, how would mom feel about this? And if mom wouldn't like it, then they're going to resist the temptation to do it. If mom would like it, then they're going to make every effort uh, to do that. But we ask ourselves, how's it going to, how's it impacting our spouse? How's what I'm doing or not doing impacting my spouse? How is what I'm doing or not doing impacting my children? How is what I'm doing or not doing uh, impacting my coworkers? How is it impacting other students? Um, we just need to continually ask ourselves, how is what I'm doing impacting my church family? How is what I'm doing? And you may say, well, nobody knows. Nobody knows what I'm doing and nobody ever will find out. You know, the, one of the truths in scripture is that everything's going to be revealed. You know, we do things in secret and we think nobody knows. Nobody's going to find out. Listen, everybody's going to find out. It, the scriptures are clear. Everything is done in secret will be revealed. And so how are we going to feel about that? How? And most time it's in our life. It's not when we come to judgment. But uh, it, whatever it is, we think we're hiding it. We think we're getting away with it. But no, it, it, you won't. It, it'll, it'll come out somehow. Uh, they're going to find out how they're going to be impacted by that. How are they going to feel about that? Years ago, Jesus laid a question uh, on my heart, and it's been a, a, a very helpful question for me uh, in my life. And and uh, and the question is this: If everybody on the planet did everything that I do, what kind of world would this be? Let me repeat the question. If everybody was just like me, and everybody did what I do, what kind of world would we live in? Road rage, mistreating a spouse, mistreating a child, being disrespectful to a boss or coworkers. If everybody did what I do, what kind of world would it be? I want to ask you that question. If everybody did exactly what you do, didn't do anything that you don't do. What kind of world would we live in? Would it be a world where people are really mean to each other? People are really disrespectful to each other. People just trash the place, you know, uh, abusing, abusing uh, alcohol, uh, abusing one another, um, foul, filthy language continuously and perpetually. Um, what kind of world? Or would it be a place of peace? Would it be a, pay, a place where people love each other? and are kind uh, to each other and are respectful to each other. And they take each other's feelings into consideration. What kind of world would it be if everybody was just like you? And we answer that question 
I think that can empower us and help us to make the world a better place, starting with me and, and starting with uh, you. So as we come together uh, next week for Sunday school and then the following Wednesday for prayer meeting on the 20th and then the 24th, I, I want us to be asking ourselves these questions. Um, is what I'm doing okay? How, how is this impacting others, people who are more sensitive to me or people who are not nearly as sensitive uh, to me. Uh, how is this impacting and how is what I'm doing or not doing impacting them? We come together with love and kindness and mutual respect. Boy, it is going to be a great, great in gathering uh, together. And, uh, and, and the reason for that is, is because we will be together on the path to peace. I hope you'll join us. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have given us these keys, these key questions that we can use as we uh, do this ongoing heart checkup, just to see where we are on our emotions, where we are on a will, strong-willed or, or not, and, and, uh, and Lord, where we are on our motives, if our motives are pure, Lord, I pray that we would just perpetually, continually ask ourselves these questions so that we might know how you feel. And uh, Lord, we're grateful that there's something in our heart. There's just something there that helps us to discern the expression on your face and, and so that we might know how you feel about things. I pray that you'd give us that discernment so that we would know when we're making you frown, that, that we would know when you were neutral, really, about something. and uh, But even more than that, we'd know when we're making you smile. Because, boy, when, when we know that you're smiling, it feels so good. When we're grateful to you for all the things in our lives, it feels so good. And, uh, Lord, peace, both in our heart and with other people, feels so good. Thank you for blessing us with a path to peace. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us and proving it by dying on the cross for our sins, by raising from the dead. Thank you for our moms. I pray that you would bless them today. Give them a great day. For those who have already gone to be with you, tell them we love them and that we'll see them again someday because of our faith in you and because of their faith in you. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would just give us a great day. Help us to be mindful and, and honor our mo mother and our father, just as you commanded us to do. We thank you for them and the blessing, the incredible blessing they are in our lives. Jesus, we love you and we appreciate you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, the most important thing, uh, if you are uh, wanting to be on the path to peace, the most important thing is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Understand he loves you. He proved it by dying on the cross for your sins. He did. He re Every one of your sins are paid for. You just have to accept payment. You just have to accept the fact that he paid for them. He proved that he died for your sins by raising from the dead on the third day. That tomb is empty. He is alive. And the Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. I hope that you've done that. But if you have, I pray that you'll do that today. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Have a great day. God bless you.